As a science communicator and a person who's interested in cool technology, I think I surprise a lot of people by not actually being an early adopter. A lot of my friends rush to buy the latest gadgets, while I'm generally happy to be writing this script and then later I'll be editing this video on a seven-year-old laptop. The reason is because I love advances in technology, but I hate consumerism. I think the world would be a way better place if we all just stopped throwing away things just because something shinier that we can buy has appeared. As a society, we're going into debt while producing more waste, working people to the bone just to make us things that we don't need and we're going to throw away within the year. So with that anti-consumerism screed out of the way, uh, I was watching the latest Apple keynote with particular interest. Uh, I mean, hey, I'm in the industry and it's at least helpful to know what's going on. Plus, I get some good comedy tweets out of it. I do tend to use Apple products uh, and I do have an Apple watch, which I bought because, look, I eventually want a future with Dick Tracy watches where everybody can call each other, you know, make phone calls on the wrist without worrying about carrying a phone everywhere. I'm a girl. I have tiny little pockets. I can't fit them anywhere. It's annoying. Also, I think watches are cool. All right. Sue me. Uh, so there are exceptions to my anti-consumerism. Uh, I won't be upgrading my watch this year, but I was really impressed with what Apple is doing with their watches and with the software on them. They're really focused on health apps, and I currently use my watch to monitor my progress on runs, to make sure I'm moving enough during the day, since most of my day is spent on my ass writing, and even to check out my heart rate when I go surfing. Uh, here's what my heart rate looked like last year when a shark's fin popped up 10 feet from me. It was kind of awesome to get on the beach and be able to look at that. Uh, mostly awesome that I was alive, but you know. With this year's watch, Apple is really stepping up their health game. They've teamed up with an app called Cardiogram and heart researchers at UCSF to clinically study whether or not an Apple Watch can detect atrial fibrillation, which is a heart arrhythmia, the most common heart arrhythmia, which can lead to stroke. One in four people have it or will have it at some point when they're over the age of 40, but nearly half of those people have no idea that they have it. That's why it's so dangerous and also why it would be helpful if there were a way to let otherwise healthy people know that they have it. After all, ideally you want to discover a deadly condition before it turns deadly. Doctors can't convince a bunch of healthy people though to walk around with wearable electrocardiograms. But a lot of people are already walking around with Apple Watches. By putting electrodes on the Apple Watch, uh, they're able to collect data from people with atrial fibrillation before and after they got uh, treatment to correct it. They, the researchers were able to then use that data to train the software to detect the condition in people who are wearing the watch. Just wearing the watch itself doesn't make an ECG, just to be clear. Uh, that requires a closed circuit that goes through your heart so it can measure the electrical pulses in your heart. Interesting fact, you could do that though by touching a hand to the crown of your watch. That would form a closed circuit that goes through your heart. Uh, but the watch alone can detect the rate and rhythm of your heart to figure out if a real ECG might be necessary for you. The software happened to be extremely good at doing this in laboratory conditions and less reliable, but still very good in real world conditions where people are moving around, wearing sunscreen that gets in the way of the electrodes uh, and basically doing lots of human things that make it difficult to tell exactly what their hearts are up to. In the next month, these watches will be on the wrists of millions of people. Last quarter, Apple sold 4.7 million watches. If they do that next quarter, and if most of those sales are the newest version of the watch, that's more than a million people with uh, atrial fibrillation who will have the watches, and about 500,000 people who have the condition but don't know it. And according to the real world tests on this program, about 70% of those people will be alerted. That's 350,000 people who might learn that they have a potentially deadly disorder. That happens to be exactly how many people die every year in the United States from atrial fibrillation. 
that's all back of the envelope stuff. And I'm not saying that Apple watches will suddenly stop all deaths from atrial fibrillation. Far from it. Most people who have the occasional AFib won't die from it. And there are definite problems with the initial study and with the implementation. The algorithm was trained using only 50 people with the condition. And only having a 70% rate of true positives means that there's going to be plenty of people who are missed and there's going to be plenty of false positives, uh, which will lead to people being unnecessarily scared and possibly wasting their doctor's time. And Apple Watches are really freaking expensive. So the only people buying them are probably the people who already have decent insurance. The people who can't afford to go to the doctor anyway probably can't afford an Apple Watch. But it's still a great start. The software has already saved the life of at least one tech blogger who was in an early testing phase of the software. And you can read about how the software uh, popped up an alert and allowed him to connect with the doctor directly from the app who sent him a proper wearable ECG. And then that sent the data to his doctor who was able to confirm that this blogger was spending about 30% of his day in AFib, which is extremely dangerous and would eventually lead to blood clots and a stroke. On a side note, I was relieved to read that and see that the alert doesn't just say, go to a doctor. It connects you with someone immediately, which should help screen out false positives and reduce the burden on doctors and the potential paranoia of users. If algorithms like this catch on, and if smartwatches catch on, then in the future, we might be able to have more economical options for people who currently can't afford them. And with more people wearing things like that, we're going to get more data, which will lead to more accurate health alerts. And this isn't just for atrial fibrillation, this software is, but a watch also has the ability to warn you about things like diabetes, sleep apnea, and even high blood pressure. So I'm not saying that everyone should run out and go into debt for an Apple Watch, but I am saying that if you were going to blow that money on a shiny new bobble anyway, you could probably do worse than supporting some tech that might end up saving some lives, maybe even your own. Plus, the next time an Apex Predator pops up next to you, you'll be able to see exactly how freaked out you were.